Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Vedi and in this video we'll talk about CODA. Hold on, we have talked about CODA, right? So in the previous video we have talked about what is CODA. In this video let's try to expand it. So we'll talk more about CODA here. Now, the one of the reasons why we needed another blockchain, oh, first of all, is, is it a blockchain? A different question, right? We'll try to answer that also. But if why do we need another technology when you have Ethereum, when you have Bitcoin and so many public blockchains? So the thing is, when we learn about blockchain, we know that we have a public blockchain, we have a private blockchain, or we can call them as a permissioned blockchain. Now in terms of CODA, it's a permissioned technology. Now what it means? See, one of the issues when you talk about public uh, blockchain is the issue of privacy. See, we have thousands of issues, but let's talk about one, which is privacy. And the way you can solve that is with the help of permissions. See, if we talk about public blockchain, Anyone can be part of this network. Example, let's say you are a company and then you want to interact with multiple companies. Of course, we are focusing more on the enterprise here. So let's say we have Apple, Samsung, and they want to do some interaction. So they want to do some dealing, they want to, uh, they want to transfer some assets. Now in this case, if m multiple companies are interacting, only they should know that data, right? Not everyone should be a part of this network. Now, how do we achieve that? So the entire network will be permissioned. That means all the actors in the network should be known. Now, when you say actors in the CODA network, we call them as nodes. Okay, so each actor, so one actor, one node, you can imagine that way. So let's say we have multiple enterprises or multiple companies, and if they want to be part of this network, they can have multiple nodes from one company. Let's say one node per company for this example. So for three companies, we have three nodes, right? And of course, as you expand the number of companies, if you want to have a big network, if you want to have all the companies interacting, you can, you can actually do that. Now the data which is available on this network is on the need to know basis. Now what it means, example, let's say there are two companies and then of course we have 10 companies in the network, but let's say are, these, are two, these two companies want to do some transaction. The moment they do a transaction, that transaction will be stored only on those nodes, not all the nodes. They don't gossip, hey, this is what is done. So it's not just about the data about the transaction, also the transaction exists. should also be known to only these two companies, not the entire network. So that's a need to know basis. But yeah, if you, if you think there's another company who should know about this, this transaction, uh, you have a choice. You can, you can make your network in that sense. Now when you have this network and when you have nodes, so we are actually focusing on the accountability over anonymity. Of course, right in the public blockchain, we focus more on anonymous nodes. Oh, pseudo-anonymous nodes, but in the permission blockchain or permission network, you need nodes who know each other. At least they should be known, right? Uh, so of course we have talked about it, they can have an identity and then they, they have to do some KYC other stuff, but they, we, have, we should know who the nodes are, right? So we are focusing on accountability. Now why it's important is because if someone is doing some malicious work or if, if someone is doing, if there's a questionable work, in that case, you can actually see who is accountable for this type of transaction. Okay, now from all these nodes, we have some special nodes. Now, one of the thing is, if you have a distributed ledger, okay, now that's a new word, right? We'll talk about it in some time. When you have a network of nodes and all these nodes are distributed, so basically you are storing your data on all these machines. So we need someone who will manage it, right? Who We need someone who will check if the particular asset is sold before as well example let's say if i'm giving this asset so let's say this is a asset and if i give this asset to someone else is there a guarantee that i have not given this asset some to someone else before so that's a double spend, double spend problem right so uh, we have to make sure that no asset is sold multiple times or no asset is transferred multiple times so how do we do that now for that we need a notary example let's say for in the real world as well if you want to buy a house, of course, you do a notary of that house, right? When you transfer that house, of course, you need a notary there. So, of course, in this network, you'll be having nodes and you'll be having some special nodes and we call them as notaries. Now, one thing interesting here, in the public blockchain, the entire topology is fixed, right? Example, when you have an Ethereum network, the topology, the network topology is fixed. You can't simply go there and say, hey, I have a different requirement. I want to change this topology. First of all, you can't do that. And most of the time it is not needed. But if you talk about the enterprise network, if you talk about 
multiple companies coming together, they have their own regulations, they have their own rules. So Coda says, okay, you want a different type of topology, it's all yours. We will give you some basic topology, but you, you have a power to customize it. And most often you do that because when you have an option, you want to design in a, in a way you want. So as an architect, you can design your network as you want. Now coming back to the same question, is Coda a blockchain? See, in the previous video, we have talked about it, right? That Coda is not a blockchain. I mean, the answer was yes and no, but to be specific, Coda is not a blockchain, it's a DLT. Now, if you want to understand the difference between DLT and a blockchain, you will find a video in the I button. But just to give you a summary what the difference between DLT and blockchain is, blockchain is a type of DLT. Example, Colgate is a type of toothpaste. So you can say Colgate is a toothpaste, but not all toothpaste are Col Colgate, right? The same way, blockchain is a type of DLT, but not all DLT is a blockchain. So the same way when you talk about Coda, it's a DLT, not a blockchain, but yes, it has some similarities. Example, when you talk about blockchain, what do you expect from a blockchain? In a blockchain, you store data, but that data is not stored on one machine. You have multiple machines, right? So basically those machines are nodes. Second, you store the historical data, right? So example, it's not just about current state. It's also about the previous state. Example, I own this phone now, but maybe this phone belonged to someone else before. Even before that, it, was, it, it had belonged to someone else. So the entire history is available in that network. In the same way, Coda says, okay, it's almost similar. You have the entire network, you have a node, and every transaction, everything will be stored in a historical way. And of course, you'll be having a current state as well, but that history is important and it is immutable. So yes, they share some common things, but again, we don't have a block. We don't have a chain, so we don't have a blockchain basically. Now, after talking about all those things, we have a question. Why do we need Coda? Oh, now you will say, okay, it was an enterprise thing we wanted, and that's why we are going for Coda. But what problem actually we are so trying to solve here? See, the problem is, in fact, we have talked about this before as well, but just to reiterate, when you have multiple companies working together, and when do, they do transactions, they store their own data, right? So when you have three companies, they have their own databases. Maybe they are using SQL Server or Oracle or any type of database. They have their own ledgers. And most of the time, these ledgers are not matching. Example, let's say I did some transaction with someone and we did, let's say, 1,000 transactions. What's the guarantee that both the, I mean, the data in both the companies are same? It might be different. Maybe there's an issue of corruption or uh, maybe there's an issue of human error. So in this case, we want a central system, right? We want a server where you will store all your data. But of course, we don't want a central server, right? Why do you put your data in a central machine? Single point of failure, and who will manage that server? So let's say three companies are dealing, who will manage that one server? If one company says, I will do it, the other two company will not trust it, right? So basically we don't want a central server, we want a distributed ledger. So every company will have their own ledger. Imagine ledger as a database. Every company will have their own ledger distributed, but they are in sync. Every time they do a transaction, it will be synced in all the nodes. Not exactly all the nodes, only nodes who are there in that transaction, right? So basically we are achieving the feature of blockchain with privacy. See, there are so many things to talk about Coda, right? In fact, I know you are waiting for the practical implementation. So we'll talk about key concepts and then we'll move towards the practical implementation. So just to summarize the video, why Coda is important because it provides multiple features to you, right? The first one is privacy and confidentiality. Where whenever, whenever you do a transaction, it will not be shared with everyone, only set of, set of nodes, which are supposed to be part of this, part of this transaction. And one of the issues which you face in the public blockchain is scalability. Coda is scalable, it is secure, and most important is it's, it is easy to use, right? And there's, there's one more thing I want to point it out. Whenever you have a new technology and when you want to implement those technology in your existing project, there's issues, right? The first issue is interoperable. You have the entire tech stack there and now you are introducing a new technology. This new technology should work with the existing technologies, right? And that's the issue we are trying to solve. And Coda says, don't worry, most of the enterprise network work, works on JVM. Uh, most of the virtual machines are Java virtual machines there. And Coda works on JVM. So you can write a code, 
which works on JVM and it's super easy to work with. I know now you want to see the practical implementation, but before that, there are some, there's a video of key concepts which you will see later. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye. Thank you.